Welcome back. Time now for our most important interview uh, of the evening. We can talk to one of the victims of the post office scandal. Uh, now, I'm delighted to say we are joined by the former sub postmistress, Janet Skinner. Janet, thank you so much for being uh, on the programme this evening. Thank you for telling us your story. So, you're a postmistress. Where were you working? In Hull. And was it a you know, particular dream of yours to sort of work in a post office? How did it come about? Um, no, it was just by chance. Um, the lo one of the local post offices um, where I lived um, on the council, one of the council estates was advertising for a counter clerk um, and it was just to cover the lunch times, so like 10 till 2. Um, and so I applied um, and I got the job. That was in 1994. Mm. So, so there you are. You're in Hull. You, you applied to a job advert. Your mum of two. Yeah. And then suddenly they accuse you of stealing. What, what happened? Yeah, well, I mean, I worked for them for over 12 years um, and they basically just held me accountable because I was the postmistress. It was my responsibility to make good what was lost. How much money was lost? Sorry? How much money did they say had been lost? It was 50, 59,000. Um, they said that I'd, well, that I was responsible for. I mean, I just can't get my head around how that how that happens, something like that. You know, there you are doing your job, working hard, trying to provide for your family, and you get accused of being yeah. responsible for that amount of money. You were given a nine month sentence. You went to jail. Yeah. Yes, I did, yes. And it wasn't just any jail, it was the same jail that Rose West was held in. Yes. I, um, I, just... I mean, obviously, I didn't know at the time. Um, I served six weeks in um, Newall, which is Wakefield, and I served five weeks in Drake Hall. Um, and then I was, when I was released, I was released on um, TAG. So I had um, and the big ang black ankle bracelet thing on for up to the end of July of 2007. I mean, I just can't really get my head around what that must have been like. I can't imagine what jail is like. I'm sure that's how you were as well. You know, you've never committed a crime, never done anything wrong, and then suddenly you find yourself in jail. I mean, how how was that? It's just going. I mean, the first few weeks, um, I just don't remember anything. It was a horrendous time. Um, I think I just cried that much. Probably didn't have any more tears left to cry. Um, they, they had me on suicide watch and it was just, then I just had to fall. You just have to go with with what you've been given. I had no choice. They weren't just going to let me walk out the door. So I had to just adapt to what where I was, to be honest. And you had two, you've got two children. How old were they when you were sent to jail? My daughter was 17 and my son was 14. Um, the day that I went to prison, I didn't even tell them. I told, they knew I was at court, but I didn't tell them what it was for. Um, and so the, um, my daughter rang to speak to her and she just, she just couldn't come to the phone. She couldn't speak to me. She was in such an emotional state. I think that just made it worse for me. Mm. I can imagine that. I'm so sorry that you and also your family had to go through this. It's just absolutely appalling. Um, you had health issues afterwards as well. You had a collapse. You were left paralysed. Yeah, yeah. What, what happened? So um, I sold my house in 2007 and I sold it because it was um, going up for repossession. But the post office had worked out that there was going to be £11,000 left out of the sale. So they put a confiscation order for £11,000 compensation. What was it like? So they then, I just carried on with my life. We rented a property, lived in rented accommodation. And 
a friend of mine had just got myself a job and a friend had contacted me and said that I was in the paper. And I said, what do you mean I'm in the paper? And he said, for non-payment of your compensation order. And what I didn't know is all of the letters that had been sent in to the house that I lost. So I didn't receive any of the letters saying that they hadn't received this money. Um, it was due to the mortgage companies that had given me a penalty um, for early settlement. So it literally wiped out any profit that was left in it. Um, I had to hand myself into Sheffield Crown Court. I was arrested. I was put in cells for the day. Um, I was told I was going to be given a five-year prison sentence for not paying them. Um, and a couple of weeks after it all concluded, two weeks after it all finished, um, I ended up going to hospital because I just felt there was something not right. I felt like I was on a boat and I, and I wasn't really stable in myself. Um, and within 24 hours, I was paralysed from the neck down. Mm. I mean, it must just have felt like you were in like a never-ending nightmare. Like, you you know, you serve your sentence and they're still coming after you. What was it like yes. to watch the TV programme? That was, it was, um, it's funny because I was watching um, Will Miller and I was actually on the phone with Lee about 20 minutes ago. Um, and it was, it was, it was quite heart wrenching at times watching it. Um, because obviously, even though I'm not characterized within it, everything that you saw within it, I've been part of. Um, I mean, I got involved with the JSV in 2011, so I've gone through the whole process. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, and to, I mean, the story itself, it's literally the tip of the iceberg. So many stories out there, it's just unreal. But it's brought it to the public and given the public a chance to be able to see exactly how what we've had to deal with, but seeing it from the opposite side. I think reading it, I thought people don't tend to take as much notice, but having it there in front of you, they've been able to live part of what we've had to live with for the past, over 15 years and like you say everyone has a story we'll have to get Leon tomorrow we've been talking about him all evening so get see if he'll come on tomorrow <laughs> um yeah. thank you so much for sharing your uh, story with us this evening it's it's just extraordinary uh, what's happened to you um, That's great. so all power to you for getting through it and um, again you. you know I'm very sorry it happened to you thank you yes thank you so much thank you